Let's learn how to manipulate dates with Power Query. So I prepared an exercise that the people in HR will love. Basically here I have a couple of people. I have Biba and Sergio and they are working on a project. So for every day, this is their start time and this is the end time. And sometimes like here, for example, the person has worked past midnight. So in a first step, I want to calculate how many hours they have worked each day on the project and what day of the week they have worked on the project. And in the second step, I want to try to calculate the total number of hours on the project. So first of all, I'm going to transform this into an Excel table. To do this, I'm just going to click inside and then we're going to do insert table. We don't want my table has headers. And then we click OK. We get this. To fix the format, you click here. You do none. So we remove the format. And then we tick header row. We don't want it. So this column 1, 2, 3, 4 will go away. And now we have an Excel table. I click on my Excel table. I will go to data. And then I will have this get and transform data tab. If you don't have it, it means your Excel version is before 2016, but there is a free add-in called Power Query. You can add it and you'll get the same thing. So I'm just going to click on From Table Range after selecting a cell in the table, and I get my data here. If you noticed, it has captured the type. So this is a date. That's why you have changed type. And it promoted headers, which means that start time and end time are now the column headers. What I'm going to do first is populate this nulls. So I select my first column, right click, I have fill down and I get the names right. Next thing I want to call this employee. And now I'm ready to do the required transformations. So let me show you something. We're just going to select the start date. There are two ways to play with dates. Number one is the transform. So basically you will apply changes on the column and you have here, for example, duration, time and date, or you can add a new column and then you have the same option. So whatever you do will come in a new column. I'm going to do the latter. So I'm going to add a new column. And just to show you some of the options, if I click on time, I can get first the hour. So if I click on this, I'll get the hour. So this is 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and so on. I'm just going to remove this step. There is another thing I could do, which is under hour, you have start of hour. In this case, it will keep the day and it will give you the hour rounded down. So for example, here the person started at 8.15, you'll get 8 a.m. I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to show you one more. So let's select start time, add column. Under time, you can also extract, for example, the minute or the second in this. So for example, if I do minute, here I'll have 15, 45, and so on. So now we're going to subtract the dates. So if I select end time and I go to add column, I go to time, you can see that subtract is grayed out. Why? Because I need two columns to subtract, right? So what I do is I select end time, I press control, keep control pressed, select start time, go to add column, I go to time, and then I do subtract. And here you have the number of hours that the person worked. And obviously the way it's done, it's like you have the day here, zero day, then you have the number of hours, then the number of minutes, and then the number of seconds. So I can, for example, transform this into hours, right? So I can do transform. Here you have duration. And then you can do either hours or total hours. If you select hours, it's going to round the hours. So for example, here you have 9 hours, 45 minutes. You do hours. You can see that you will get nine hours. Now, if I just remove this, if I go back to transform and I go to duration, if I do total hours, here you have the number of hours with decimal points, which is what we want. 
So now I want to just have one decimal place so I can go to transform again and I have rounding. We're going to select round and we're going to put one decimal place. So now we have fixed the hours. The next thing we want to do is to get the weekday. So we select the start time. We do add column under date. You have day and under day you have name of day. If you select this, you can see here that we get Saturday, Sunday, and so on. I can also get a number for your day. So for example, Monday could be one, Tuesday could be two, etc. I'm going to show you how to get it. The numbers that you'll get will assume a weekend. And this weekend is assumed based on your computer. So if your computer works differently than mine, you'll get something different. So for example, for most of you, Monday will be number one, Tuesday will be number two. For me, it's going to be different. So look at this. If I go to date, day, I can have day of week. And here I get zero to six. So for some of you, this will be different. If I want to combine those two, I can just press control, select the second column, right click, and then you have merge columns. So the name of this will be weekday. So for the separator, let's assume we want something custom. So we're going to do space dash space. And then we say, okay. So now we have zero and Saturday, one and Sunday and so on. That's combined. We are good. We can just remove those two columns. So I select the first one, control, select the second one, right click, remove columns. And I am left with the number of hours and the weekday. For number of hours, we're going to change the title, num of hours. And then we are done. So we can go to file, close and load to. I'm going to put it in an existing worksheet, which is here. Let's put it next to it so we can see it. Now let's assume that you made a mistake like me, for example, and you have it one row below where it should be. You can just select those three cells, right click, do delete, shift cell up, and then everything is fixed. Now the next task is to calculate the number of hours for Sergio and Biba. So here I have my table. I can just double click here and go back to Power Query. And if you see here, I have this table. I can obviously change the name of the table if I want to, but I'm not going to do this. I'm going to add another query that will be based on this query. So I right click here and I have something called reference. I click on reference. So I get a new query here based on the first query. And here I can play with this data and get another table, which will show me the number of hours for each employee to do this. I can just go to transform and then I have group by here. I can group by employee. What will be the name of my new column? It will be total hours. I want to sum the hours and this is the number of hours that I want to sum. So I say, okay. And I get the number of hours. I can go to home, click here, close and load to. Then I can say existing worksheet. Where do we want it? We want it here. We say, okay. And then we get the total number of hours. So this is how you can play with time, days, dates, etc. in Power Query. Within a few clicks, you can get this result. And obviously if you append data, it will all automatically update. You only have to right click and then click on refresh. So please let me know in the comment section, especially whoever works in HR, what are your potential scenarios where you have to change dates, play with dates, do some calculation. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video.